Well, folks, in case you missed it, the Hollywood premiere of Star Wars The Force Awakens was last night, and the star is certainly out, but one star who isn't in the film had everyone doing a double take on the red carpet. So this is Joseph Gordon-Levitt dressed as Yoda. There oh. he is. There he is. Um, and people like it. It's been handed around on social media a lot because it looks kind of cute. There he is with some stormtroopers in L.A. The only issue I would say is I think Joseph Gordon-Levitt has forgotten the narrative of Star Wars because sequentially in the last one, which is Return of the Jedi, not the last one to be made because there was three prequels, yeah. but in the last one sequentially in the narrative, Yoda died. <gasps> Why did you tell me that? So, I haven't seen that one that, yet. Because that film came out 30 years ago. <laughs> oh, well, it's You've had time. It. Maybe I was going to uh, Netflix it this week. We came down You've had time. All your life. You anyway, I'm just saying, Yoda has died. I think turning up as Yoda is, is disrespectful to Yoda's family. Um, this came out today. This is really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to like this. This is about the celebrities who, when you put them on the front of the magazines, sell the most magazines. I wonder who that is. Well, Ad Week, they release the sales figures for popular magazines that feature famous faces, and we're learning which celebrity covers really sold the best stories it's of the year. We're going to start with People Magazine here. Yeah, so their August uh, third issue ah. featuring Blake Shelton and Miranda Lambert's oh, quote yes. shocking split uh, was big for them. It sold 800,000 copies off the newsstands. This even topped Ben Affleck and Jennifer Garner's divorce. Wow, and then there's the worst. Apparently, the worst, yeah. Pope Francis during his trip to the US, only selling 450,000 off newsstands. Come on, the Pope, we can't say he that's kind of unfair. I don't know. I mean, 250 million people took to the streets to see him. Yes, exactly. I don't think he's too concerned with only a handful <laughs> of people buying uh, him on People magazine. As you might imagine, this cover did the best for Vanity Fair this year. Caitlyn Jenner sold roughly 400,000. So normally they sell, I think, they, they average about 160 odd thousand Vanity Fair, so it jumped wow. to 400,000. And it won a huge award recently for best magazine cover of the year as well. It was pretty sensational. Yes, it was. And this kind of hurts me to say because I love this gal. Sarah Jessica Parker, apparently sales not doing well, bringing below average numbers for this Cosmo yeah. um, cover, and also for Harper's Bazaar, but I think she's a fantastic person. Um, Jennifer Aniston's still doing well. Here's a just tiny interesting detail buried in this, is that Kim Kardashian doesn't do that well. Caitlyn does well, Kendall does well, Kim Kardashian not selling well this year. And the Pope, who, I'm not yeah. sure, is this right? The Pope not doing well? Uh, I, th uh, I guess if you are a devout Catholic, you're probably not that bothered about people. But he's still a rock star and, if you're not Catholic. Uh, but uh, next up, we want to talk about tennis superstar Serena Williams yeah. earning another honor. Sports Illustrated Sports Person of the Year. Yeah, she is. So here she is claiming that she is another magazine club cover claiming in, uh, the rightful throne uh, in that photo because of the astonishing year that she's had. You know, oh. I'll tell you a great fact about her. I interviewed her father, Richard, at length. Once. Oh, really? And... You know that for Serena and Venus, before they were born, he wrote down on a piece of paper that he would make both of them the tennis champions of the world. Wow. But if you think about that, that's at odds with talent. He didn't know they were going to be good at tennis. Wow. His family doesn't play tennis. Is it the most intriguing that thing? That is kind of fascinating, yeah. We do have some sad news, though, for the current longest-running production in Las Vegas, the Jubilee. They're ending their 34-year run. That's with the women oh, with no. the tatas hanging out. Oh, no. Drunk audience, yeah, the drunk men go. are now going to have to find another show uh, to go and see <laughs> that they will immediately forget.